What's up guys? In this video, this is really going to be part three of the fan switch situation because I've been having issues guys. Like to introduce the K motor thermostat housing, swi swivel neck thermostat housing. Okay. Comes with the uh, thermostat, the uh, temperature sensor switch, the uh, 16 AN thread fitting that you could put on there. If you guys have that set up, I don't like that. I like using regular hoses and that's why I came with the regular uh, fitting. And the third, look, this is the fan switch area. And that's where I'm gonna be putting my fan switch. So this is where I have If you look in there, if you guys look in there, there's a better view over here, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. There's a better view right here. The bottom hose, I think that's a K-Tune bottom radiator hose, and it comes with the part where you can put your fan switch. The issue I've been having is, I thought it was a, a uh, air in my coolant system problem, but it's not. I done burped this bad boy a good six, seven times. I'm talking about an hour, two hours each time. Fresh coolant, it's green, it's super green. I have a radiator compression tester to see if you have any leaks in your coolant system. I found a little leak in my heater core holes, in my heater core holes. So I just took that bad boy off, put some of that one minute gasket maker stuff that I showed you in the uh, listening video. The uh, coolant, the uh, oil cap vent video, the part two, I, I use some of that. That thing's never going to leak again. But it wasn't that, guys, because it's I'm still having issues with, I'll drive around. While you're driving, it's fine. It, it, it won't overheat because when you're driving, you got your RPMs up and it's cycling that coolant. The water pump is spinning faster and faster. The problem is when the car is idling, phew, It'll eventually, the uh, temperature in the coolant temp sensor, the coolant temp sensor in the head, that will eventually reach 228 degrees. And then the, uh, K, the K Pro will send, will make the check engine light cut on, telling you that it's overheating. And I'll sit there and wait for the fan to cut on. Sometimes it does, it cuts on maybe sometimes like 230, 232. But it's really overheating once your coolant is over 220 degrees. That's why the light comes on. It's a safety mechanism. And I like my shit right. So it's not air in the system. The head gasket is not blown. I already did the uh, that blue fluid. I'll show you guys. I already did this. Oh, God. Sorry, I don't I don't edit my videos like because everybody else does it. I already used this bad boy. I already used that bad boy. I already used that shit. Not to have a blown head gasket. Stan motor got 1,500 miles on it, and trust me, I did my shit right. So there's no air in the system. Make sure it's still recording. There's no air in the system. And there's there's no leak within the head gasket. So the K tune bottom radiator hose, it's silicone. It's silicone. Yes, they they last a million miles. They last a million years. They can take like 300 degrees, 400 degrees. That's cool. That's good and all, right? That's great. But my theory is. Since that hose is made to take a lot of heat, I think it deflects or gets out some of the heat in the coolant way more than it does for a regular rubber hose, right? Because when you grab onto this one, when it's hot, it'll burn your hand. If you grab onto the bottom one, even when it's at its hottest point, you can hold on to it for quite a long time. Pause. And it's not going to burn your hands off. So it definitely dissipates, if that's the word, a lot of heat. And my theory is it's not.
because the fan switch is coming out of the silicone hose. It's coming out of it, guys. And look. The coolant is traveling like this. Straight across like that, right? Straight across, straight across. The little sensor piece at the bottom of the fan switch, yes, it's touching the coolant, but it's not in the midst of, of, of that full pressure because it's sitting up a little bit up in the hose. So my theory is it's not reaching that 176 degrees because once that sensor reaches, that's a, that's a Mishimoto fan switch, 40 bucks on Amazon. It works, guys. I've taken it out and I tested it on my stove in a pot and you get a multimeter, you get a multimeter, you get a multimeter joint, uh, look up how to test it. Um, and it works. Once it reaches 176 degrees, 80 degrees Celsius, I think that's 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, 80 degrees, 80 degrees Celsius. Wait, what's wrong with my phone? 80, 80 degrees Celsius is 176 degrees Fahrenheit. It works. There's nothing wrong with the fan switch. The problem is that damn silicone hose is not letting it reach that 100%. While you're driving, it works because the coolant is uh, const it's constantly uh, uh, circulating throughout the motor because the water pump is spinning faster and faster. So the fan doesn't need to cut on because while you're driving, my engine coolant temperature stays around 187. That's the average temperature. So that bottom hose is probably at 150. It's not nowhere near 176 degrees. So that's my theory, guys. My theory is that silicone hose is not good um, when it comes to you relying on your fan switch that's in your silicone silicone hose to make the fan cut on. It's it's not a good setup. And it's not just my car. It's if you have a silicone hose, if you have that K tune shit, I'm, I'm not talking about I'm not talking bad about K tune, but the way the hose sits up, it's not right. It's sitting up about two inches, so that constant flow. There's there's more of a flow, and the coolant will be hotter within that flow going through the hose, and you got that sensor sitting up about two inches, with the little sensor. It's not going to be working right, you know? It's not going to work as good as if it were in there. You see that? And considering this is aluminum, this is metal. Metal stays hotter longer than silicone does or rubber. So that constant flow, this metal is going to be hotter than any hose. If you grab onto this, you know? So that... That fan switch is going to be screwed into here, and it's going to be right there, right by the thermostat, right where all of the pressure is. Because when it's traveling through silicone, it is dissipating some of the heat. This bad boy is going to be getting all the heat that it can get. So this is definitely going to reach 176 degrees. I didn't do it yet, clearly. I just wanted to make this video to show you guys this. But that fan switch is going to be right here, right in the center of all this stuff going on, where the thermostat opens and it, and it uh, closes, and it's metal. That sensor is in goddamn silicone. Silicone. This, man, this has been going on for about two months, man. It's been driving me crazy. I haven't even been, been able to enjoy the car Cause while I'm driving, it's fine. But if I go and get food and I sit in the parking lot, I gotta watch the temperature. I gotta rev the motor. I gotta keep the RPMs up once it creeps up. Cause don't get me wrong. Most of the time the fan does cut on. It cuts on when the engine coolant temperature hits 217 degrees. If you ask me, that's too hot. Even on those regular Civics. The uh, regular Honda Civics, the uh, two 2001 to 2005 Civics, the fan cuts on 
at 203 degrees. When the when the coolant temperature sensor, if you if you have a scan tool or you got this blue driver, Bluetooth one, if you look at your phone, you'll notice that the fan cuts on around 203 degrees. On this shit, it cuts on way at way up to 217. For me, that's too long. That's why I know it has to be a problem with the bottom silicone hose not heating up enough to make the fan cut on. So, just wanted to make this video, you know, to show you guys from K Motor. This was a hundred bucks from Amazon. K K Tuned. Why did I say Skunk Tour? I think I said Skunk Tour. K Tuned has. I think they were the first company to to uh, make a swivel neck thermostat housing for the K20, K24. Props to them. But I wasn't spending two twenty. K motor, I don't know how good this is gonna work. Like the uh, cheap ones that they have on eBay and Amazon for right, 40, 50 bucks. I, you know, read the little comments and people saying that man started leaking and I had to seal it up. So I said, hell no. So I went with K motor because I got a lot of other stuff from K motor the radiator support holder, radiator holder kit, the bottom part. The little coolant, the uh, temperature sender fitting, uh, valve cover, breather thing, fitting, fitting for my PVC line, you know, they got cool stuff. So I will see how it works.